Namaste. I'm Holly Wakastora and welcome to a Yoga Valentine. This is going to be an invigorating sequence of backward extensions. And we're going to start by practicing Virabhadrasana 1. It's a standing pose that has one bent leg and one straight leg. And the straight leg that's placed behind you creates an opening similar to the opening that backward extensions are going to offer us. So, from Tadasana, join the inner edges of your feet, press your inner back heels down, roll your shoulders back, and release the shoulder blades down in the direction of your heels. See that as you lift and open your chest, your lumbar spine, so located in the back of your waist area, doesn't shorten. So as I roll my shoulders back and move my shoulder blades down, at the same time I have to see that the top of my buttocks are moving down in the direction of my heels. From Tadasana, take your hands up in line with your collarbones. Bend your knees and with a big inhalation, jump your arms and legs wide apart. Lift your inner knees and thighs up and press your outer feet down into the floor. Keeping your arms extended, turn your right leg forward and your entire left leg forward. Don't let your hip stay back. Bring your hip forward with you by rolling the front of your thigh in and then to extend your leg more, lift your inner thigh and inner knee and press your outer heel down. With your next exhalation, keeping the top of your buttocks moving down, bend your right knee and bring your right buttock bone down in line with the back of your knee. Keep reaching through your left heel. Bring your arms down, back, and then up. And as your arms go up, take your head back and connect the back of your head with your tailbone. Keep pressing your left heel down. As you bring your head back to the center, take your arms out to the sides and straighten your leg. Come back to the center. Lift your inner thighs and knees up and press your outer feet down. Don't just stretch your arms. Reach from your chest into your arms to create space around your heart and between your lungs. Turn your legs to the left. Turn your entire left leg out. And don't forget as you turn your right leg forward to bring that right hip with you but reach that inner right thigh, knee, down, back towards the wall behind you and press the outer right heel down. With your next exhalation, keeping your buttocks descending and your right leg fully extended, bend your left knee to form the square. Resist back through your right leg as your left knee and shin go forward towards the wall in front of you. Take your arms down, reach them back, and then up. Stretch from your chest all the way up through your fingertips. Lengthen your armpits, and then without unbending your knee, keeping your knee fully bent, take your head back and connect your head to your tailbone. Raise your head up, extend through your arms, bring your arms back to the sides, turn, your legs and trunk to face forward, and then jump your arms and legs back together again. Our next pose is Adho Vishwanasana, downward facing dog pose. I'm going to encourage all of you to pause the video now and take some time to look at last month's video on how to winterize Adho Vishwanasana, downward facing dog. So we'll take classic downward facing dog pose, but if we had more time, doing the variations of dog pose from that video would be very helpful 
to promoting an opening in your armpits, a lift in your chest, and a fire in your prana, vayu, and your heart chakra that would benefit your back bends tremendously. So starting on your hands and your knees, see how I take my hands forward from being directly underneath my shoulders so my arms are at an angle. Now watch, I'm not lifting my spine up towards the ceiling or letting my spine sink towards the floor. I'm keeping my spine directly in the center of my body, where it belongs. Okay, now with the toes tucked under and the arms absolutely straight, see how I reach my buttocks back towards my heels and then lift my knees up off the floor. Okay, now the weight of the body is more over the hands in this pose than it is over the feet. So see how, with my next exhalation, I press my hands down into the floor, pull up on my arms, lift my shoulders, and stretch my legs back towards the wall behind me as I reach my heels down towards the floor. Let's do that together now. So starting on your hands and your knees, with your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips, take your hands one hand's distance, approximately forward. Look at your thumbs. Lengthen from your inner wrists to your inner thumbs so your inner upper arms are activated. Now, with your next exhalation, keeping the top of your buttocks moving towards the bottom of the buttocks, pull your buttocks back towards your heels, and then lift your knees up off of the floor. Now, with your next exhalation, press down into your hands, pull up on your inner arms, and move your shoulder blades away from the wall in front of you. Lift your knees and thighs up and take them as far back towards the wall behind you as you can. Lift the tops of your shins up. That will help bring your ankles your heels down towards the floor. And then come back to your hands and your knees. Sit back on your heels. Our next pose is Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana is Upward Facing Dog. So in Downward Facing Dog, the pelvis is the highest point of the pose. And now we're going to invert it. So the chest, which was down below, is now up, and the pelvis, which was up, is coming down. So we'll come to downward facing dog. So just watch the shape of the pose change from the chest being down and the pelvis up to the chest being up and the pelvis down. Start on your hands and your knees. Let's do this together. Okay, now in Chaturangasana, which is this pose, look at your inner upper arms. As you press your inner wrists and thumbs down into the floor and reach from your inner elbows to your inner wrists, turn your upper arms away from each other so that they're turning from the inside out. Lift your knees up off the floor and raise your hips up as high as you can and take your thighs as far back as you can towards the wall behind you. Now, to come to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana from Adha Mukha Svanasana, raise your head up, lift your chin up, lift your collarbones up, lift your sternum up, and bring your pelvis down towards the floor while keeping your toes tucked under and your heels reaching backwards so your thighs stay lifted. Now press your hands down, pull up on your chest, and take your head back, as you did in Virabhadrasana 1. Bring your head back to the center, keep the extension in your arms, and invert the pose. So now you come back to downward facing dog, and the chest is the low point, and the pelvis is the high point. This next pose, 
didn't used to be one of my favorites when I was younger because it's so close to the floor and I felt like I didn't get very far in the pose. But as, as I've gotten older, I've appreciated its spinal strengthening benefits. It's called Shalavasana. It's the locust pose. In this pose, you start on your abdomen and raise your head and your arms, your chest, and your feet and your legs as far off the floor as possible. Start lying down. Bring your chin to the floor and reach back through your arms so your arms are fully extended. Raise your leg up, roll the front of your thigh in, draw the outer shin in so you feel the inner leg extending through the big toe. And then bring the center of that leg down onto the floor. Repeat with the other leg so that you're centralizing the legs, bringing them onto their median lines, and creating an extension through the inner legs. Now, watch that the buttocks don't lift up here. The buttocks have to move away from the lower back, and you press the front of your thighs near your pubic bone down into the floor. Inhale, and with your next exhalation, reach back through your inner legs, to your inner heels and your big toes. Reach back through your inner arms to your inner wrists and your thumbs. And bring some of the weight forward onto your abdomen so that as you raise your legs up and roll your shoulders back, your limbs lift evenly. Exhale and lower yourself back down to the floor. You can repeat that several times. Our next pose is Ustrasana. It's the camel pose. And you're going to make the camel's hump with your body. This pose has a base of the shins, the ankles, and the feet. So see how I'm reaching back through my shins. I'm elongating my shins by reaching my toes back towards the wall behind me. If the ankles are up, the buttocks have a tendency to lift up. So press the ankles down, even if you have to put a little bit of a blanket underneath them or a rolled sticky mat so that you have some, something underneath the ankles to press down into. Because see, when the ankles press down, the pubic bone lifts up, the sides of the waist move back and the buttocks descend, which lengthens the lumbar spine. Take your hands to your waist and roll your shoulders back. In this first stage of Ustrasana, you're going to press down on your shins, ankles, feet, and toes. Don't lean back, but lift your chest and rib cage up and away from the floor. Now, take your head back, take your eyes back, take your shoulders back, take your collarbones back, but keep the sides of your chest lifting up as your hands come to your buttocks. For the last stage of the pose, keep the back ribs lifting up as you take your hands down onto your heels. To come up, keep the shoulders back as you lift up from your chest to come back up. That's an invigorating pose, and again, it comes better if it's practiced with repetitions. Our last pose is the bow pose, Dhanurasana. BKS Iyengar says that the body is the bow, the asanas are the arrows, and the target is the soul. This pose starts prone. It has a very similar shape to Ustrasana, but you make it from lying down instead of kneeling. Again, roll your thighs in and extend your inner legs to bring your legs onto their median lines. See that the pubic bone is moving towards the navel and the buttocks moving away from the waist, so the lumbar spine is, the integrity of the lumbar spine is maintained. With your next exhalation, bend your knee 